The five secrets to gaining more energy. Many people suffer from low energy. It has to do with how, what's going on inside of your body, inside of your cells. So let me explain it to you. It's real simple. We have our cells here. These are just two examples of cells in our body. We have trillions of cells. And our body is designed to take nutrients from the foods that we get and, and chew them, eat them, break them down, go into our body's bloodstream. And from the bloodstream, these nutrients go into the cell to make energy. But the biggest blockage of energy is not the nutrients. It's the fact that we have toxins in our body that block the nutrients from working. There are substances in our bodies called free radicals, and they damage the body. And we need these five different secrets, these five different nutrients to help to get our body to be protected so you can have more energy. Let's talk about it. So we have our cells here again, like I mentioned before. We have our brain, our liver, our kidneys, our heart, our bloodstream. And again, these are some cells here. We have DNA, the mitochondria. Inside of the cell is called the intracellular fluid. Outside the cell, it's called the extracellular fluid. Go figure. And anyway, inside the blood, we use the little stars here represent glucose or sugar. So the object and how to get good energy is getting that sugar from the blood into the cell because there's little doorways in the cell that allow the sugar to go into it to create energy. But like I'm mentioning here today, if you do not have these seven secret nutrients, it's difficult for that sugar to get into the cell. Why? Because the sugar is being hit and being uh, bombed, if you would, by these different types of toxins. So how do you protect yourself? Well, you need a variety of these different nutrients in different strategic places in your body. Let me explain. It's not that difficult. So you have here your bloodstream, right? Inside your bloodstream is blood, which is a, a liquid. Around your cells, there's a liquid. Again, we call it the extracellular fluid. <coughs> Inside the cells, we have the intracellular fluid. So we have this fluid in our body. The fluid is a watery substance. So we need a watery type nutrient to protect those areas so that sugar can get into the cell. So one of the first ones is a major antioxidant called vitamin C. You know about vitamin C, but you got to have the vitamin C be able to get down into the cell area here to, to hang out around the cell. So when there's these free radicals, these free radicals hanging around, these FRs, you get a lot of these FRs. They come from chemicals that you may be exposed to, maybe things in your food like artificial colorings, artificial flavorings. One of the biggest producers of free radicals in your body actually comes from oils and bad oils in your diet. So eating things like corn oil and canola oil and soybean oil, these oils are rancid, so they have a lot of free radicals and they can damage the cell membrane. So we need vitamin C as a major protector in the interstitial fluid. So a, a, a free radical attacks the cell and the body uses antioxidants because another name for free radical damage is called excess oxidation. So we have antioxidants preventing excess oxidation. So vitamin C is a very important one and it's water soluble. But there's a lot of confusion out there about vitamins, especially like vitamin C. There's, they say there's different types of vitamin C. There's ester vitamin C. There is fat-soluble vitamin C, ascorbyl palmitate. Uh, you have liposomal vitamin Cs. Those are just fancy terms that they, what, what happens is they take the vitamin C and in a laboratory, they, they put it, a fat around it. And that fat does protect the vitamin C from going down in your digestive system and it doesn't allow the stomach acids to damage it or to break it down, which is, which is a pretty good thing. However, you don't really, research shows you don't need the liposomal vitamin C. You can do just as well with an inexpensive vitamin C. But what's even better than just vitamin C, vitamin C doesn't work alone. It needs its family, if you would, to help it get absorbed. So vitamin C needs the bioflavonoids. So that's why in nature, you never see vitamin C by itself. For example, in an orange, in an apple, in a cantaloupe, you have a lot of vitamin C. Peppers, red peppers, you have vitamin C 
But the vitamin C always works with its family members, these bioflavonoids, because they help each other to get and to, and to protect each other, and they help each other work better in the body. So always get vitamin C with the bioflavonoids, and you need enough of the vitamin C to be able to help, help your body, to help to protect it. So making sure you're getting at least 200 milligrams of vitamin C to about 500 milligrams. And no, you do not need to have more than 500 milligrams a day of vitamin C unless you have a particular situation you're trying to deal with. In other words, if you have a cold or flu, research shows that taking more vitamin C for a short period of time is very, very good for helping to activate your immune system. But you do not need, need more than 200 to 500 milligrams on a daily basis, okay? Unless you're a smoker, right? Smokers do need more. Uh, so that's, that's a different story. But, but just talking about the fact that we need this family of vitamin C to be, and vitamin C will hang out around the extracellular fluid. Vitamin C will hang somewhat around in the intracellular areas. And vitamin C will also hang around your blood, again, protecting your body from these free radicals. And again, when the sugar is hit by the free radicals, your energy goes down. The second type of uh, very important secret to helping your body to have more energy is vitamin E. Now, unlike vitamin C, vitamin E is fat soluble, which means that it hangs out in the fatty areas of your body. And so vitamin C, again, is water soluble. It hangs around the water areas. Vitamin E hangs around the fat areas. So you may be thinking to yourself, well, what are the fat areas of my body? Well, your cell wall. The cell walls here are made up of fat. So this is where vitamin E hangs out. And if there's not enough vitamin E in your cell membrane, your cell membrane cannot be healthy. That is a very crucial thing. Now, we're talking today about getting more energy. If your cell membrane is damaged, that means that your doorways on your cell membrane gets damaged. And then the vitamins, the, then the, the sugar from your blood to give your body energy into your cells can't get into the cell because there's damage to it because you don't have enough vitamin E. Vitamin E protects you from those free radicals. So vitamin E works in the fatty areas of the body. Like I said, so the cell membranes is where we like to have vitamin E. Um, we also like to have vitamin E inside the cell. The vitamin E, especially the mitochondria, which is your power plant, which is where the sugar makes its way into to give you energy. That's where the vitamin E also protects. So the vitamin E protects your mitochondria because the mitochondria is a cell wall. The cell wall is made up of fat. In science, we call it a lipid, but it's the same thing. So the lipids and the fats protect, uh, uh, the lipids and fats are protected by enough vitamin E. So how much vitamin E do you need? You don't need much. You need anywhere from 20 international units to about 75 IUs, international units of vitamin E per day. My favorite source of vitamin E comes from wheat germ oil. And wheat germ oil is a really, really good source of vitamin E. But again, the secret, it's not just vitamin E by itself. Like vitamin C that needs its family of the bioflavonoids, vitamin E also needs its family. We call them tocopherols. And the tocopherols, are, are like the cousins of, of the vitamin E that help the vitamin E work better. So if you're going to get vitamin E, make sure it has tocopherols. And again, I, I use wheat germ oil because wheat germ oil has all the mixed tocopherols in them, and it's very, very helpful for protecting the cell membranes of the body. We also know that because vitamin E is fat-soluble, it's very, very important for your brain, for your liver, your kidneys, because there's some fatty areas around those organ systems that need to be protected. So we have vitamin C, we have vitamin E. The next one is called carotenoids. Carotenoids is a fancy term. It just means vitamin A. Now, vitamin A is, is helpful in areas that we say there's low oxygen tension. What does that mean? That means that the, the, the carotenoids, sometimes one of the most famous carotenoids is called beta carotene. It's just a form of vitamin A. And vitamin A, if, you ever, if, you listen, if you've listened to my videos before, you know that vitamin A uh, is very protective to the epithelial cells, meaning your skin, your lungs, and your intestines need a proper amount of vitamin A to be protected. So vitamin A is another secret to also giving you more energy because if you're protecting your epithelial cells you're, and, you're, and you're, you have enough carotenoids, enough beta carotene in your body, you're going to be able to protect, again, the cells from getting damaged so you can produce more energy. And let me say it like this. One of the most common signs of cell damage is low energy. 
So using vitamin C, using vitamin E, using the carotenoids, beta carotene, vitamin A is crucial for helping your body get more energy. The next one is coenzyme Q10. You probably heard of that. We actually make coenzyme Q10 in our bodies, more specifically in our livers, but because of all the toxins around, because of all the stress we have, we don't make a lot of CoQ10. So CoQ10 can be taken as a supplement, but CoQ10 has a unique ability to protect the high energy muscles of the body. So one of the highest energy muscles of your body is your heart. So CoQ10 is phenomenal for helping your heart. In order for your heart to have enough energy to pump, you must have enough coenzyme Q10. So a coenzyme means it works alongside of different vitamins and different nutrients to help activate certain, certain energy producing uh, substances in your body. So it's really, really important to have enough coenzyme Q10 and most people don't give enough. I like about 100 milligrams of coenzyme Q10 a day. Um, there's actually research that coenzyme Q10, again, it's, it's important for high energy muscles. Your heart is a high energy muscle. Your brain is a high energy muscle. We know that your liver and your kidneys also are areas that need a lot of coenzyme Q10 to be able to protect them and to produce energy. Let me say it like this. Coenzyme Q10 is the rate limiting nutrient in the production of energy in your body. So with a, without enough coenzyme Q10, you cannot have enough energy. One of the biggest things that robs your body of coenzyme Q10 are infections and foreign invaders, bacterias, viruses, um, parasites, fungus. These are all problems that when they invade your body, they actually reduce the amount of these nutrients in your body. And, and we need to have enough coenzyme Q10 to be able to help the body to stay energetic. Okay, so we have these four secrets so far. We have, we have the vitamin C, the vitamin E, then we have the carotenoids or vitamin A, CoQ10. And one more thing about CoQ10, the, again, it's, it's very important for these high energy systems. Your brain, your brain uses a lot of energy every day to think. So you need enough coenzyme Q10 to keep your brain functioning. We all know that, that Alzheimer's and, and um, dementia and all these different disorders of the brain are on the rise. And a lot of it has to do with lack of good enough coenzyme Q10 in your body. And I've seen research studies and I've worked with patients who've actually had chronic heart disease, right? And giving them enough CoQ10 actually helps to strengthen the heart because the coenzyme Q10 is important for the high energy muscles. Your heart is a high energy muscle. You have CoQ10. The last but not least is my favorite antioxidant. It's in my opinion, and many scientists say that glutathione is by far the most important antioxidant we have because glutathione is found in many, 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 many different types of tissues in your body. And it's a major, major protector of your body. So glutathione helps to prevent and protect the intracellular area inside of your cell and your DNA. You know that each cell of your body performs 30,000 different reactions every second? Mind-boggling. One brain cell, one neuron in your brain performs 4.5, makes 4.5 billion molecules of energy every second. One little brain cell. And the brain cells need glutathione also to be protected. Glutathione, again, a lot, most of your body's glutathione is made in your liver. So you want to have a good functioning liver. So if you're drinking too much alcohol, you're damaging your liver, you're depleting your body of glutathione. If you're around a lot of toxins, you're depleting your body of glutathione. If you have a lot of stress in your life, emotional or physical, you are depleting your body of glutathione. And glutathione is that major, major antioxidant that helps, again, in the intracellular areas of your body, as well as in your, in your uh, liver, again, your kidneys and your brain. We need to have enough glutathione. So those are the things that are very, very helpful. Um, you can actually get glutathione. Glutathione can be purchased in a capsule form. 
There's another, um, there's an amino, glutathione is called a tripeptide. It's, it's a three, um, three different amino acids that make it up. And you can also use to make glutathione more in your body, the amino acid called cysteine. Uh, cysteine uh, and acetylcysteine, the acetylated form is better, but cysteine is an amino acid that is a precursor that helps your body make more glutathione. And it's a phenomenal antioxidant is NAC. So, which is again, is, is cysteine is the major, uh, major amino acid in the production of glutathione. So we need to have that as far as that goes. So if you want to know a little bit more, a more of a deeper dive into energy, it, again, you have to have these antioxidants to help your body to make energy, but you also need to be able to get your sugar into the cell. And that's where insulin comes in. Insulin is a major, major substance your body makes to help you make more energy.